But I knew as a leader what that church needed was evangelism. And I also knew that I don't have the gift of evangelism. I'm an introvert, I'm not good at this. I, I, I was a seminary graduate, I was an ordained minister, and I led one person in my life to faith in Jesus Christ. And I was a kid at camp who more or less forced himself on me. It, it, I mean, it wasn't even one I could get full credit for. And, and I knew that was what that church needed. I was impressed with Paul's words to Timothy that he needed to do the work of an evangelist. I take it that Timothy was the pastor of the church in Ephesus, and he, like me, he did not have the gift of evangelism, but that's what the Ephesus church needed. So he needed to step up and do it. All right, so here's what I resolved to do, that I would go out every Tuesday and every Thursday night to homes in the community, a town of 18,000 people, and I would knock on the door of strangers and I would ask if I could come in and talk with them, and I would present the gospel and invite them to become followers of Jesus. So I did it. Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, week after week after week, with no good results. Uh, often never got very far in a gospel presentation. And I was pretty much sick every Tuesday and Thursday. I had headaches and stomach aches, and I dreaded those days of the week. And just kept doing it. So one night I was in a home. Uh, this couple was there, Myron and Doris were their names. And they actually let me give this full gospel presentation. I, I got all the way through and I said, now does this make sense to you? And they said, yeah, it really does. Okay, I'm really embarrassed by what I'm going to say to you. Uh, I'd never gotten that far before. And I didn't remember what I was supposed to do next. <laughs> And um, so I left. <laughs> and I couldn't go out to the car and look it up. I, I, I didn't know what to do. So, and then I got home and I felt really guilty about that. So um, I called them up and asked if I could come back the next day. So I went back the next day and said, you know, probably seemed a little strange the way I left. And said, yeah, it really did. And uh, I said, you know, you said that this made sense. So. What, what, what does that mean? You know, if you were to tell God, what would you say? And they didn't have the theological terms, but they basically said, you know, we've done wrong stuff and only Jesus can fix it. And, and he died for us and we need to believe in him and commit to him. And I said, these are totally unchurched people. I said, well, prayer is talking to God just the way you talk to me right now. So why don't you, why don't you just go ahead and tell God what you just told me? And they prayed this amazing prayer. And they came to church service the next Sunday. And after that, actually, they turned out to be pretty good evangelists. They actually went out on Tuesdays and Thursday nights and knocked on doors, and, and they did okay. And some more people were trained. And the church was transformed. It, it, I mean, it more than tripled in size through new believers. And and I quit going out on Tuesdays, and you can only be sick so many Tuesdays and Thursdays. But the other people could do it. They had the gift. But that's what effective leadership is. It's figuring out what needs to be done, and then stepping up and doing it. But next on my list, 